then I thought maybe, you know, to keep it from happening to you, maybe we could just do like a short greeting. Maybe I'll just pick two places and a short um, greeting and uh, business card exchange. So I don't know if somebody from the um, audience wants to volunteer or... Bo, Bo would like to. I will just pick you. And then we'll... So, uh, or Senator Davis we'll, will pick uh, and someone Julie, for me. And Julie, would you as well? That way we have the two of you up, if you don't mind. And even if you do mind, I don't care. <laughs> it's our protocol. If you're in Japan, we know that Japan has very formal uh, protocol around greeting and around their business card exchange especially. Um, so when you greet a Japanese person, normally the handshake has become very, very common there. So they will usually first, hi, I'm Shannon, nice to meet you, shake your hand. However, light grip, a light grip. If you give them a Russian death grip, they will, their eyes will pop out of their head. <laughs> Japanese usually do a very, very light handshake. Um, and then typically afterwards, if you, know, you can remember, the bow, just a slight bow, is with the hands on the thighs and from the waist. So just a short bow. Um, and I usually, if you know a few words, I studied a little bit of Japanese, so I hajime masume, so a little bit of shiku, and then I see And then it would be the business card exchange. So you would always have the Japanese printed on the back of your card, um, and make sure that you present it to them with two hands, um, with the thumbs at the top, so that you make sure that you don't obscure any of the on the card, which is very important. Um, yes, and then you would give them the card again, maybe a slight bow from the waist, and then they would give you their cards back, face up, facing you, and you take it right at the corners, here, and then you would look at it, acknowledge them, and then when you go for the meeting, you would come and put the card on the table. And you keep the card on the table the whole meeting. Um, so just to remember everyone and to acknowledge them. So that's some very formal protocol around a business card. Okay, and, well, let, uh, let's see Bo do it now. Oh, no, 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 Bo, come on. Let's, and let's hear your Japanese, too. <laughs> You're funny, Bart. <laughs> In China, it would be a similar thing. It's usually with two hands. Um, you would take a lot of care with the card. You know, it represents the person. So you don't write on the card. You don't stick it in your pocket. Um, you, you know, lay it on the table. However, um, from what I understand, and I have never been to South Korea, uh, but there's a difference there that you do not leave the card on the table. It's considered rude, right, to keep the card out for too long. So you might go through the same um, scenario with the, um, the actual exchange, but then you would put the card away in a card holder. So that would be that exchange. Um, and then, <laughs> and then the other exchange, I thought I, thought I would do a polar opposite exchange, and that would be, I was just in Argentina with a delegation. And in South America, business cards don't tend to be as important or, you know, the exchange is really done without any fanfare, you know, kind of hand the card to them. So it would be the same kind of, you know, simple greeting, just the handshake, but this time a little bit firmer. Hi, I'm Shannon, very nice to meet you. And then I would um, give the card again if you have the language always, you know, face up with the, um, their language facing them. I would just give you my card. And then you, as an Argentinian, would probably say, because we had this may happen many times, oh, my card. Oh, I, I don't have a card with me. Sorry. And then I would say, well, that's great. You have my card now. All my information 
information on it. Um, you know, please feel free to email me your information if you'd like to. You know, it'd be great to stay in touch or whatever, you know, the, the follow-up is going to be or the information that you might need with them. So, you know, Julie doesn't have a card with her. She left it in her office or she's run out of cards. <laughs> I got quite a few different reasons for why the person didn't have the card, but yeah, there's obviously really different levels of the importance that's placed on these kinds of things. So, doing your homework, and uh, there's so much information out there now on the internet, it's so easy to do before you leave, so great. Thank you. <laughs> So thank you very much for having me. Um, it's really been a pleasure to be here. And our office is always a resource. You know, if you have things come up and you um, have questions, you can feel free. You can feel free to come get my card <laughs> and contact me in the future if you'd like to. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, Louise, please. Thank you. Can you hear me OK? <laughs> thank you, your co-chairs, for, for, uh, for inviting me, for being such great friends in Canada, for the warm welcome yesterday. Really appreciate it. Um, I will be, uh, I will sell through my presentation um, because it'll be great to get a little bit of interaction and going before the time is up at, at 12. And, and while there's, I think, overlap and in insisting on from different angles, I really want to avoid repeating things that have already been said so that we can get right to the conversation. So if I could just follow the, uh, thank you. And hopefully everything will stop there. The thank you, that's me, my name, you know that. So. What I'm going to touch on a little bit here is going to be more about uh, beyond the protocol, beyond the introduction. What do you need to pay attention to and be aware of? And I just want to say, start with, as the only non-American member of this panel, I can say, um, uh, you know, when you're visiting other countries, they know you're coming. And they have their own stereotypes about Americans. I'm sure you've known it. So they're ready for just about anything. And uh, the loud, the, the, you know, the, the touching, the, the whole thing. So be aware that they're also very prepared. And they're not going to be, they're unlikely to be shocked by anything that might happen. But that doesn't mean you should take advantage of that and just become the complete caricature uh, of, 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 uh, of, uh, of, of what they might be uh, perceiving. So, um, so on, on this issue of cross-cultural communication, so I'm just... I'm just going to speed through, as I said, I'm going to speed through this. Um, so it's really about many of you who are involved in, 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 in politics and, and, and policy, and you have probably been pride of, and you're, you've taken pride of being congratulated in the past of having emotional intelligence. You're good with people. That's why you're elected. You understand uh, how to interact with people in your own culture, and you understand how they think, and you're able to leverage that. So what happens when that skill that you have, um, when you go abroad, when all of a sudden there's, it's like putting a tape over that skill. It's like, make, it, it's like putting blind, uh, blindfolders on, really, because all of a sudden body language and, and cues and things that you would be looking for that, that help inform how you are going to interact with someone are gone, because the cues are different in different cultures. For example, eyes closed in a meeting is perfectly fine in Japan. You're not being ignored. You're not, um, you're not, not being listened to. This is what they do. But if all of a sudden you're giving a presentation and you've got the principal Japanese in front of you, his eyes is closed, you're going to think you're boring him. Um, and you're going to try to maybe put more emphasis or become a little bit animated. And it's absolutely not necessary. So, it's important that you know your own culture going into this. So recognize who you are, know what they might be thinking of what you're going to do, and at the same time, just be aware that some of the cues that you might be looking for in your normal uh, interactions in North America, even with us Canadians, um, may, may be completely different. So uh, I, did, I, I have to say, I did find this, the eyes closed thing difficult to get used to. I mean, after four years in Japan, I still, I still, I thought, nah, 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 they're sleeping. This is, this is, they're, they're really kind of napping. They had a big night before, and I'm told, no, they're not napping. So uh, I think it might have been half meditative. Um, um, so 
as I just mentioned, understand your own behavior and your own culture. Recognize what your triggers are. Be aware, uh, as, as uh, Shannon and Anne have said, when you do your research, when you have this information, be aware of the kinds of things that might bother you about another culture. Um, over formality. Um, the, uh, it may be, understand what your own triggers may be, because we all have our own triggers. We like things to be a certain way, and some things don't bother us, some things bother us. So uh, maybe you don't like raw food, and you know you're going to be exposed to raw food, and it's not going to be a little bit of a drag. But just know all of that. Know what your own, um, who you are going into this, and that you have your own um, uh, triggers to be aware of. Be curious and interested. And now that's been talked about uh, both by Anne and Shannon. And I think you, I don't know of any culture that's going to not appreciate interest and being culture, like, interested in them and asking them questions. Now, there, there's some cultures that they'll ask you about your private life. Uh, some won't. And these kinds of, you might have want to be careful about some of the questions you ask or have done your research on it. But showing interest uh, and, and, uh, and being graceful towards the culture that you're interacting with. You know, you cannot do, go wrong with that. Um, okay, I'm going to skip through here. I'm not, oh, that's why. Build knowledge and apply it. I don't think I need to go over that ground again that's been covered. Uh, um, you know, a little bit of research goes a long way. You do not need to become an expert on the culture you're visiting. Don't, don't put that kind of pressure on you. You're representing the United States of America. Uh, and, and, and you should just be representing your country. You don't need to turn into them. They don't want you to be like them. That's not what they're looking for. There might be some little things that you need to do to be aware of in terms of uh, clothing, or you don't want to go out of your way to offend either. So if there's little accommodations that you may, you can make, make them, but don't change, don't become local. Uh, that, they're not gonna like that. Uh, they're, they're gonna, that's going overboard. So you just, you, there, is, there is a line there, absolutely. Um, um, now, I'm gonna just tell a little, st very quick little story. Um, and, and when I was in Japan, I, um, I used to go to a lot of events, obviously, in the evening, and a lot of diplomacy happens after six o'clock at night. <coughs> and uh, often my, I would br bring my husband, he would come with us. Um, and after about two months, I told him, no, 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 you're not going to need to stay at home. And <laughs> you know why. Peter and I would go to these events, and right away we would meet wonderful um, Japanese interlocutors and counterparts, and right away they would assume he was the embassy representative. Um, and I'm not passing judgment at all on the culture. It was just a cultural thing for them. So when all of a sudden, Peter would have to say, no, it's actually my wife. And then they'd get into this five minutes of apologizing. And then Peter would apologize, and I would apologize. And they would be apologizing for five minutes. So it was, and Canadians know how to apologize, as you know. Uh, I, actually, I think we apologize more than the Japanese. Um, so it was long apologies. Um, and so finally, what we decided, a simple solution. Peter said, well, I, you know, I really don't need to go. These are business events. And we did it this way because there was no avoiding it. It happened every time. It, he, he would have had to wear a, a, a hat or something saying, I'm the husband. And, and it just, so we, we, we adapted it. So it, but you have to laugh at these things a little bit. But, but there are counterintuitive things. And one of the things that I would want to say um, is, if you're going to a Japan or a China, you're going to assume those enormous differences um, in culture and protocol. When you're going to Europe, you may think that it's really much more, it's more similar. Well, it is, but not, sometimes it creeps up on you how different <laughs> it truly is. And I'm French Canadian, and I can tell you that being a diplomat in, in France was the biggest challenge of my diplomatic career. Because while we share the same language and a lot of cultural things, we are North American in our, you know, in our manners. And uh, there was a couple of things that surprised me. And I made a mistake on that first, of, well, I almost made a mistake, but somebody corrected me. Um, in, in France, the most important person is introduced last and speaks last. With that's so counterintuitive to us. You know, the main person is the person in charge, goes first, and then after that, 
lesser importance. And I had, had the protocol completely wrong on, on, the, on the line of speeches, and it was, it was corrected. But I thought, really, in France, they do the, the, the other way around? So don't assume too, too much when you're going to places like the UK or, or France or Germany or places that you, know, you think that the culture is more Westernized and, and similar. You, you might actually uh, misstep more there than, than in, in a country that's completely different. Um, so, um, so I've talked about this a little bit. You have uh, same. This is another. This is another little tidbit that's in, that's interesting. We tend to front load our speech when we speak in a meeting. We tend to start with the most important thing right away. We want to get that out of the way. We want the, the, the whole discussion to be on this. In other cultures, same thing. They will they will lead up to what the point of it is. And Japanese are very much like this. And so you might tune out before the, the really the punchline is going to be delivered. And by the same token, you might have started with your most important thing in the discussion, and they're waiting for you to come up with something else at the end that they're waiting for, because they think you're gonna, your, your most important statement will come near the end of your speech. So be aware of these kinds of things. Uh, be a good listener, be a good observer. I mean, that completely uh, dovetails what Shannon was saying. Uh, stop and confirm that you're being understood. Now, this is important. The number of times where you're thinking you said something, they heard something else, this will happen. And so you just want to make sure sometimes that, especially when it's something important, when it's, you know, it's about a deal, it's about something, or a negotiation, you want to validate that you're on the same, that you're on the same footing because they may be, you know, in the North Pole and you're in Florida. So uh, it's, yeah, be very careful there. Announcing it slow, slowly and distinctly I do not shout, but that's clear. But sometimes we think if you're unlessening, we, we, we bring up the, the volume. And that's really, that is very much what has been said. Be yourself, be yourself, but be the most polite possible person you can be. Uh, and, and, and then I think you'll be forgiven just about anything. Um, and uh, that's us, Canada. And um, so I'm looking forward to any questions or interactions. Um, thank you very, very much. Thank you.